So it would probably help if I shared the screen with you guys, wouldn't it? So you don't have to actually guess. All right. So the last time I saw you, we were talking about trig functions on any angle. If you remember, that was 4.4. And we talked about trig functions of any angle. And we have a little chart. If you remember correctly, I'm actually going to go back on my thing and write that down. I'm on the, I changed all those pages looking for uh, what we were going to be doing and I lost my spot. Now I'm back. Um, and if you remember, we knew that if we had a sine of theta, it was going to be equal to y over the radius and cosine of theta was equal to x over the radius and then tangent of theta again was equal to y over x it's always sine over cosine and then we had our inverses of those right we had cosecant of theta which is just always the inverse or the flip of sine so we would have r over y um, we had secant of theta, which was r over x. And then we had cotangent of theta, which was x over y. And if we looked at this, I would look at this and I go, well, x can't be zero because it's against the law of math to divide by zero. And here I would look at this and I would go, well, y can't be equal to zero because it is against the law of math. Again, here, this one I believe is x. x cannot be equal to 0, right? And here again, y cannot be equal to 0. We don't have to put in r can't be equal to 0 because r is our radius, and our radius can't be equal to 0. Remember, it is x squared, the square root of x squared plus y squared, is that r? If you remember correctly, we, we had r equals x squared plus y squared because it's all based on the Pythagorean theorem and it's a distance. And so it automatically can't be zero, right? So we don't even have to put in that r can't be equal to zero. It's sort of a given. My computer's making a really weird noise right now. Um, that's just kind of a recap of what we did last week. And then we took that and we found the, we, we were evaluating, right? The trigonomic functions based on, on these principles, right? Sometimes we had to find the length of R using the Pythagorean theorem, blah, 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 right? I also gave you another little chart. So this part was a big piece of information that we got the last time I saw you, right? Then we also got this other piece of information that I gave you, right? And depending on what quadrant we were in, we knew what the sign, the, the sign as far as positive or negative of sine, cosine, and tangent were, right? In quadrant one, x and y are both positive, right? So over here in quadrant one, we know that sine would be positive, cosine would be positive, and tangent would be positive, right? Here in quadrant two, anything that's x is negative on this side of the line, right? And so cosine is x, right? Cosine is x, sine is y. So here we know that sine would be positive because it is y. Cosine would be negative. And tangent, since it's sine over cosine, 
is like saying a positive over a negative, which gives us a negative. Do you guys kind of remember this chart that I, that I made up for you? Does anyone actually remember that? Here in quadrant three, we had, well, everything's negative here, right? X and Y. And if sine is Y, that's negative. If cosine is X, that's negative. But if tangent is sine over cosine, we have a negative over a negative, which gave us a positive. And here in quadrant four, our Y's are negative, but our X's are positive, right? So sine which is y would be negative and cosine, which is x would be positive and tangent, which is sine over cosine would be negative. And this is a really good chart to have on hand whenever you're solving trig functions of any angle. And the reason for that is that the only thing that really changes is what those signs are, right? I mean, as far as our X, Y value, and it allows us to find like areas where it could be based on what we're given. And we did some problems with that, not gonna jump into it, but I did want you to remember it because we're gonna be using especially both of these um, in the sections that we're covering today. Today, what we are talking about is I have got to start checking to make sure I'm using a clean whiteboard. Today, what we're going to be talking about is quadrantal angles. And you're like, what the heck is a quadrant quadrantal angle this way? Or you're like, I totally know what a quadrantal angle is. When we're talking about quadrantal angles, the trig functions of quadra quadrantal angles, trig functions, of quadrantal angles. I can't even say that this morning. Quadrantal angles. Anybody have a guess at all at what a quadrantal angle is? I mean, I know it's a shot in the dark, but uh, anybody have a, a guess on that? No is a perfectly good answer. It's a complete sentence. The quadrantal angles, if we're looking at a graph, right? Yeah, this isn't the prettiest graph. But our quadrantal angles are the angles that fall on the axes. So here we would have like 0 or 2 pi. Here we would have pi over two, here we've got pi, and here we have three pi over two. These are our quadrantal angles. There are 90 degree angles. Um, and when we're figuring out the trig functions of our quadrat quadrantal angles, which are what? Zero, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two. We have to remember what our points are at those angles. We are talking about the unit circle and the unit circle is always one unit. And so the point here on a unit circle would be one zero. And the point here would be zero one, and the point here would be negative one, zero, and the point here would be zero, negative one. Does all that make sense so far? Are you following all of that part so far? Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Jasmine. I appreciate responses. So if I were to ask you to find the quadrantal angles or find, let's see, what are we going to look for? We're going to look for 
find cosine and tangent of the quadrantal angles. I'm glad it's just cosine and tangent because if I had to find all six, that would take forever, right? It wouldn't be difficult, but it would take forever. So weird to see like algebra one a stuff while I'm teaching pre-calc. So if I need to find cosine and tangent of the quadrantal angles, let's look at cosine. Let's start with zero. What are our, if I'm looking at the cosine of zero, right? Well, that is X over R. On a quadrantal angle, my R, at least when we're doing the unit circle, right? We're one unit away. My R is always going to be equal to one because it's the distance on the angle, right? From here to here is one unit. From here to here is one unit. From here to here is one unit. And from here to here is one unit. So my R is always going to be one when I'm dealing with the quadrantal angles. And so all I have to do is go, well, X over R at zero would be one over one, which is one. Cosine of pi over two. Again, we're talking about cosine, which is X over R. And we know that our R is one. Our X though, in this circumstance is zero, which means that our quadrantal value is zero. Zero divided by one is zero. If I look at cosine of three pi over two, oh, I should go pi first. I gotta go in order. I forgot about pi. Cosine of pi, Again, it's X over R, which for us is going to be X is negative one over one, which is negative one. And our last one would be cosine of three pi over two. So we've got our X and our R. We know our R is one and our X in this circumstance is zero. So again, we have zero. So that's cosine, right? And sine would work similarly. We would just use y where the x was, right? If we were looking for, for sine. But we're not in this case. We were asked to find cosine and tangent. And we found all the cosines. So let's look at tangent now. If I have tangent of 0, well, tangent is sine over cosine, which is y over X. And if you don't remember that, that's okay. Just go look at the chart, right? And in this case, if I look at tangent of zero here at zero, my point is one zero. So my Y value is zero and my X value is one. So I wind up with zero over one, which is just zero. If I look at tangent of pi over two, I've got y over x at pi over 2. And if I look at this one, my y value is 1 and my x value is 0. So I wind up with 1 over 0. But that leaves me dividing by 0, which disrupts the space-time continuum. And we cannot do that. So we have to say that this is undefined. Remember, we can divide into zero, but we cannot divide by zero. Then we go to tangent of pi, which again is y over x, which is going to equal, well, here my x is negative one and my y is zero, so I have zero over negative one, which just equals zero. Notice zero on top equals zero, zero on the bottom 
equals undefined. And last but not least, we have our tangent of 3 pi over 2, which is again y over x, which in this case, right, our y is a negative 1, and our x is 0, and so we are again left with undefined. Did that make some kind of sense to you? It's not super difficult, right? It's just knowing which points you're looking for at your quadrantics, right? That's always going to be zero, one, or negative one, right? Everything in there is, you know, when you look at your x, y, and we're talking about those quadrantals, your x and y are always going to be zero or one or zero and negative one, right? And they'll flip back and forth between the x and the y. Um, at the quadrantals, you're always going to have two undefined in the tangent and two undefined in the cotangent, if that makes sense, right? Because in them, you're always going to be dividing by zero on two of them, which would leave you undefined. Um... So what's next? I stopped looking at my cards and now I, uh, there it is. So that's just a little something with the quadrantal is kind of just like a, a, a little stretch on what we were doing the other day, right? It's not that much different. It's just those, it's just dealing with them with the, uh, those axis angles. Screen does not want to move. The tech is just not dealing, working well for me today. Like everything is slow. It's like it's Monday for the technology too. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is reference angles. And we talked about reference angles when we were doing those special 30, 60, 90, those, those main angles that we use when we're talking about, um, trig functions, right? When we we're doing the actual right angles, the 30, 60, 90, and 45 degree angles. And we had to find the reference angles. And if you remember, I gave you formulas for them. Well, the formulas aren't changing, right? Reference angles. If you remember what we had were, if I had like, say an angle that went like from here to here, right? And this was my theta, right? This was my main angle. And if I was asking for the reference angle when it was in quadrant two, it was this distance from here to here. And we're going to refer to our reference angles as theta prime. This is theta, theta with a the little mark over it. We call it theta prime because it's just the reference angle to theta. It's always going to be that distance from either 180 degrees or pi. Like this, this line, it'll always be whatever distance that angle is from, from our x-axis, right? So if I have a reference angle and it is here in quadrant two, if it's in quadrant one, there is no reference angle. It's its own reference angle, right? In this quadrant one, everything's just positive, no reference angle. But if it's in quadrant two and you want to find the reference angle, there is a formula. And to find that theta prime, if we are talking about radians, we would use pi minus theta. If we were talking about degrees, we would use 180 degrees minus theta. If it's in quadrant three, say we have our angle in quadrant three, right? So that this 
is our theta, but this distance from here to here is our theta prime, our reference angle. When we want to find that theta prime, we use theta minus pi, right? When we want it in degrees, we use theta minus 180 degrees. Lastly, if it is in say over here, right? Think about this. My theta goes all the way this way, right? That is theta. My theta prime is just from here to here. Does that make some sense, right? It's whatever makes up that 360 degrees or that two pi. Um, when you want to look for the theta prime here, that reference angle, you're going to go two pi minus theta. Or if we're talking degrees, you're going to go 360 minus theta. And that's how we're going to find those reference angles. So if I'm asked to find the reference angles, which I'm going to be asked to do it, because I'm going to, well, I'm not going to be asked, I'm going to be asking you to do it. If I say find the reference angle, oof, I can't spell today. Monday for me too, man. Find reference angles of the following. We'll do a couple of them. Um, let's do find reference angle when theta equals 300 degrees. Well, 300 degrees is going to fall over here in our quadrant four, right? It's going to be between 270, right? If I look at this, this is 270. Right? If we do a, a dealie here, right? This is zero and 360, but it is also zero and two pi, right? This is pi over two but it is also 90. This is pi, but it is also 180. And this is 270, but it is also three pi over two. All right, those are just our, our simple conversions. If I have 300 degrees, all I need to know is that it's gonna fall in here, right? And if it falls in here, I'm gonna use this formula. And so to figure out our theta prime, our reference angle, we are going to use 360 minus theta because it is in degrees. We're going to go 360 360 minus 300, which equals 60 degrees. What if I have theta equals 2.3. Well, now this isn't a degree, this is a radian. And we have to figure out, well, where the heck is 2.3 gonna fall? Well, we know that pi is 3.14, right? It's 3.141526, blah, 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 right? So, popular all of a sudden. Zero, 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 just called me. So 2.3, when you think about it, if, if we're talking 3.14, half of three is 
right? So we know that 2.3 is going to be more than 1.5, right? Which would be around here. So it's going to fall in this quadrant too, because it's less than three, but it is greater than one and a half. Does that make some sense as far as finding what quadrant 2.3 would be in? Think of it in terms of what pi is. Pi is 3.1415926 forever and ever, right? And it can kind of help you narrow down where it's going to fall. And so because it's in quadrant 2, it falls into quadrant 2, we're going to use pi minus theta. So we're going to go that theta prime, that reference angle is going to be pi minus 2.3. And we don't know what that is right off the top of our head, but I do because I wrote it down, right? Because it's going to be calculator math. And it is going to sort of equal, that's what the little squiggly lines means, approximately, sort of equals 0.8416. Um, what if we have, I like this one, theta equals negative 135 degrees. Now, if we look at what negative 135 degrees is, it means that we are going to take this and we're going to go, let me use a different color so it stands out. We're going to go 135 degrees in this direction and it's going to fall somewhere along these lines, right, in the negative. But we can't use a negative for this. So we need to find that coterminal angle. If you remember when we first started doing all this trick, we had those coterminal angles, right? They were the angles that added up to 360. And so if this is negative 135, there is an angle that's coterminal, right? That starts from the same place and ends in the same place, but goes in the other direction. And the way we could find that is we could go, well, it's whatever 360 minus 135 is equal to, right? And if I wrote it down correctly, it was 225, right? So our coterminal angle is 225 degrees. So where negative 135 degrees falls is also positive 225 degrees, right? They're the same spot. It's just in the positive direction. And this, I know it's taken us back a few sections, but it was pretty easy stuff. It just, I know you probably need your memory sparked on all of that. So here at theta equals negative 135, what we're looking at is theta equals 225 degrees, right? And to find that theta prime, that 225 is in our third quadrant. And so we're going to go to our third quadrant and we're going to go, well, it's theta minus 180 degrees, right? Which is 225 minus 180, which would give us 45 degrees. So we had, a, I liked all of these examples a lot because it brought you every unusual circumstance you might fall into, right? Because the rest of them, like if you just get a degree or a radian, right? If I got like pi over six, well, let's not look at pi over six, like seven pi over three or whatever, it would be easy to figure out where that goes right? To find that quadrant and what to work with. You just figure out what quadrant it's in and then you pick that formula. Any degree measure I give you, it's easy. If it's a positive degree, you just go to where that is, wherever that quadrant, whatever quadrant that line's in, you use that formula. Um, but I wanted you to see what to do when it's negative because that's a little different, right? You just go find the positive coterminal angle. When you have something like 2.3 or 4.7, just see where it lies in relation to what pi is and what 2 pi is. And it, you should be able to find what quadrant you're in 
and then know what formula to use. Does that make a little bit of sense? All right, so we're moving on to the last part. The last part is gonna, ooh, I don't know if I can get to it. I've got six minutes. I don't know if I could do it in that time. Um, I don't think I can. I don't think I can get through it in that time. Um, shoot. So our homework just got shorter. Um, yeah, there's no way I can, I can get through the trig functions of that using reference angles. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I will stop the video here. I am going to, I don't know. I'll just tack it on to the, the, the lesson later this week. You might wind up getting like a, a third lesson this week because of it, but hopefully I can just, yeah, no, I can, I can put them together because the next stuff is more just, I know I'm talking out loud to you guys. I'm, I'm figuring out in my head while, while I'm uh, discussing with you. I'm going to stop the video right now.